We are starting to see phones launch with the new Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 and 7 Plus Gen 3 and over the next few months we are going to continue seeing a lot more phones launching with these chips. Now Qualcomm they have two mid-range chips, very similar sounding mid-range chips, the 7 Gen 3 and the 7 Plus Gen 3 and they are very very different. Different to the point where one might even call this naming scheme slightly misleading, slightly. Why? What's wrong? What exactly are these two chips? Let me explain. Now, if you've seen my Not CE4 video, I did explain this. Consider this video an extended cut of what I was talking about in that one. Because guys, there's only so much time I could spend to talking about the process or the SOC in a product specific video. And I feel this is important enough a topic to do a standalone video on. So anyways, if this is your first time here or in case you just can't remember, my name is Ash, you're watching C4 Retech, and let's get started. Now both are 4 nanometer chips, yes. But let's start by looking at the 7 Gen 3. What we are getting here are 4 Cortex-A715 cores, with one core being clocked a little higher than the rest. 2.63 and 2.4 GHz respectively. Then we get four efficiency cores, the Cortex-A510, they clocked at 1.8 gigahertz. So basically the 7 Gen 3 is a downgrade from the 7 Plus Gen 2. And this is super weird. Just look at these numbers. See how the 7 Plus Gen 2 does better with CPU, GPU, and as a result, the overall compound scores. It's super weird since this is not something we've typically seen with Qualcomm. Now the 888 Plus to the 8 Gen 1, that was a clear upgrade. And so was the 8 Plus Gen 1 to 8 Gen 2. And this was in all areas, CPUs, GPU, the overall compound scores. Now that is an upgrade this generation, and that's the 7 Plus Gen 3. This will get clearer to you once you see what it is that the 7 Plus Gen 3 actually has to offer. Here we get an actual prime core, the same one found on the 8 Gen 3, the Cortex-X4. Though understandably it is clocked a little lower than on the 8 series at 2.8 GHz here. We then have 4 performance cores, A720, clocked at 2.6 GHz. And then three efficiency cores, the A520, they're clocked at 1.9 GHz each. For the GPU, we get the Adreno 720 and 732 respectively. No shit, Sherlock. The one with the plus has better performance. Shut up! Of course it's better, but the difference here, it's way too drastic. If you look at it, we're getting 50% better CPU performance and over 90% better GPU performance. That and the RAM storage differences are what cost the 7 Plus Gen 3 to post 80% higher compound benchmark scores. So what's wrong with higher performance? Nothing really. Now these are gains we don't even see between generations like 8 Gen 2 to 8 Gen 3 which was very positively received and considered a major upgrade. We got about a 30% boost in CPU, 45% boost in GPU and overall a 35% boost in compound benchmarks. Now this doesn't mean the 7 Plus Gen 3 is a bad chip. It's actually quite good as long as if Qualcomm price it right, which they seem to be doing. We have been seeing decent phones coming out with it, but the 7 Plus Gen 3 is where it's at. It's the chip that gets pretty close to last year's flagship 8 Gen 2. So the point of my video is to basically let people know that the plus here, which usually at worst stands for about a 5% difference or at best 30% difference, it means a whole lot more. So when you're buying any phone in the next few months, uh, when you're researching, when you're watching review videos, when you're looking up specs, just keep in mind that the 7 Gen 3 and the 7 Plus Gen 3, they are very different chips. They're entirely different beasts. Anyways, hope you found this video useful. If you'd want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.